Yo everybody, what's going on? This is Keegan from K-Man Reviews. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you hit that like and the subscribe button. And if you have any opinions at all that you would like to share, make sure to leave them down in the comment section. Blade, Ice Dancer. Blade is a Swedish rapper, singer, iconic figure in the cloud rap scene, and now pretty much a mainstay on my channel. I've reviewed three projects of his, the first being the debut mixtape Glue, the second being his debut album Ever Since, and the third being his most recent collaborative ever with Echo 2K being Crest. All of those will be linked in the corner if you want to go check those out. But now we're jumping back a little bit to take a look at one of his most acclaimed mixtapes, Ice Dancer, released in 2018. Had a lot of hype for this one, even at the 19 tracks that it is, so I apologize in advance if this is a longer review than normal. But regardless of that, let's dive in. What are my thoughts on Ice Dancer? Let's find out as I review it track by track. We will start with the singles, which I can only find one of them, that being Be Nice To Me, and right away I've already got to praise this production work. Out of all the Blade projects I've listened to, including Crest, this one is one of the best songs I've ever heard him on. The bass is so hearty and full, every pound is incredibly virtuous while the twinkling, beeping synths in the background are very addicting when they're buried into the melody like this. This is also one of the few times I can recall where Blade is under zero vocal effect from what I can hear. Maybe a slight bit of tuning, but he sounds amazing. Sure, he can sound a bit monotonous in places, but in contrast with the slightly flashy and colorful beat, there's a pleasing juxtaposition there, especially with a melody as gratifying as this. I can absolutely see why this is the single. Amazing song. Now for the rest of the tracks. Opener's Smart Water is an amazing way to start off the tape, presenting a bit of a sunnier outlook on Blade's music in comparison to the frosty invasiveness of Blade's earlier music at this point, like ever since. Mainly prominent in his vocals, he just sounds happier on the mic, even if in this case he has been thoroughly coded in effects. The beat is pretty standard for Blade, not really any synthetic accoutrements, but the bass still pounds hard and the ticking hi-hats are very smooth. The lyrics are also part of the chorus in Blade's music rapping about lavish accessories and lifestyle, but also his persistent anxiety. Out of all the Blade intros I've heard up to this point, this is probably the weakest, especially since this one doesn't stand out too much in the mixtape's context. I think there are better tracks down the road, but it is still a hard-hitting song. OKK has another pretty typical trap rap beat, nothing spectacular at all, same throbbing bass, hissing hi-hat, but I do enjoy the windy ambience lurking in the background. Aside from that though, the song is barely a minute and a half long, and it doesn't really do much aside from serve as a pretty flawless transition into the next song, so take that for what you will, but I see this more as an introduction to the next song. Malhor Freestyle is an amazing highlight for the tape. I completely understand why so many herald this as one of the best here. Blade's flow here is just immaculate. Very classic Blade, almost with the more slurred, trudging delivery, but a much more lively tone overall. His presence is riveting, and the minimalism of the bass and hi-hat really make that presence hold such a firm position as the centerpiece of this song. I also really gotta commend the ethereal background noise, another part of the song that feels like older Blade, and I can really get behind it. Very fun song. Frosty the Snowman features a foggy introductory statement, and I really get sucked into it, letting everything dissipate briefly before building the synths back up, while Blade delivers, in my opinion, one of the best melodies on this tape with the chorus. I don't know what it is for me, it's so simple, but infectious, and that catchiness does not stop for the verses either, as the flows still resonate with me. It's probably one of the tracks I've revisited the most after this review. I also really like Blade's charisma on the track, he still has a bit of that iciness to his delivery, but it's much brighter like a platinum white overcast lighting up the sky like the snow dormant on the grass. I also enjoy the lyrics here, using Frosty's namesake as a metaphor for his crumbling mental state and burgeoning isolation. His connections with the outside world are only temporary, much like the tale of Frosty. Absolutely adore this track, it's a highlight for me. Inside Out featuring Young Lean kicks off with a surprisingly monumental and intense buildup. The consistent synth pulses really command a lot of attention, and when that beat finally drops, it's easily one of the hardest beats on the entire tape. The percussion is loud and dominant in the mix, the hi-hat plus cutesy chiming bell partnership is enjoyable, but it's really the inescapable synthetic dome surrounding this song and the listener that takes the spotlight. There's hardly any room left in the mix when everything here is utilized, but it's not a suffocating song. I'll be honest, I didn't even recognize Young Lee when I first listened to the track, I guess I was just so enamored in the beat, but after many more listens, I was incredibly pleased by both artists' performances. Neither of them really stand out in the mix, in fact, I dare say their voices are much more instruments in and of themselves in the song. Very hypnotizing listen, I like it. 
close is actually the longest track on here, but it isn't even three and a half minutes. And this one does really harken back to the Everson's era in pretty much every way. Deep sludgy bass, a hollow hi-hat, twinkling elegant synths, and this time a bit more of a monotone delivery. If I didn't know, I would have probably just thought this was an Everson's B-side. Thankfully, since I did like that album, that thought isn't really a bad thing, as I do still enjoy this one. There's a minimalistic effort done to this song. The lyrics are easily my favorite part, about wanting to get close to this person, but simultaneously fearing that kind of intimate vulnerability. Pretty good track. Jaws is another top tier moment on the tape. The song has a beautiful amount of bop and punch to it. The heavy throbbing bass and the hissing trap percussion, plus a little consistent metallic ding, it feels so much more developed than the typical skeletal hi-hat infesting the record up to this point. Blade's performances across the track are amazing too. He really harnesses both the slurring melodiousness of his previous albums and the sunnier, warm, comforting timbre of his later material, and I adore it. It doesn't overstay its welcome and feels like a perfect length, but just barely missing out on the two minute mark. It's a bite sized gem here, and I love it. Cartier God Ice Dancer, parentheses intermission, featuring Ocean Gang CEO Cartier God, and this seems to be the song that everyone praises, consistently labeled as the best track on the tape, and there's definitely a reason why, because I do think this one is pretty great. The beat here is so chill and laid back, the bass is limited to subtle reverberations instead of blunt stabs, there's also chilly synths and reserved hi-hat rattling, it's moody and it's atmospheric, really sweeps up a listener easy. Love Cartier's presence over this, his deeper delivery is very enchanting, and when paired with Blade's grayer performance, they both help the song maintain a trance-like quality, and it's an amazing song. Side by Side featuring Tie Boy Digital continues this streak of amazing songs, as this is one of the heaviest bangers on the tape. Such a nice transition from the more moody nature of the Cartier God intermission, with almost some violent bass pulses and more brittle hi-hats. However, much like on Frosty the Snowman, the melodies here are so damn satisfying, especially for Tie Boy's chorus. I really like how he delivers it, while Blade's verses are a bit more slurred. You get a great mix of both vocal styles here. Lyrically, the song is actually pretty cute, Tie Boy singing romantically about his wife on the chorus, and he apparently played the song at his wedding, which is pretty cool. Love the song. Top Man has a powerful emotional edge to it, and it can all be traced back to this somber beat. Of course, you still have the typical bass and hi-hat, but what really separates this song from any of the other tracks prior is this keyboard melody. It's very blue, down-tempo, haunting to an extent. It's an amazing slow jam that I can definitely see striking a chord with many a listener. Much to my surprise though, Blade holds on to his more dynamic delivery instead of the one note sadness I would hear on ever since, but looking at it, I think it was almost a smarter idea. You can almost pinpoint several emotions running through his mind as he passionately sings about all the spending and flaunting he does, plus how he feels being at the top and knowing he fell off, but making a triumphant comeback. Great song. Waster is another tried and true banger on the tape. I love the sheer magnitude of this bass, the ensconcing waviness of the synths, it's a powerful track with a lot of heat. Blade's vocals are really nice too, I like his melodies, there are definitely points in the track too where he hides behind the instrumental, fusing with it, it's kinda one of my favorite elements of Blade's music. The track doesn't really give me too much else to talk about here in its 2 minute runtime. it's short, it's sweet, what's not to love? Special Place is honestly another track that doesn't really give me too much to talk about, but one thing it does do is feel like an evolution of Blade up to this point. You can hear a lot of the elements of his earlier projects here, but just more refined and polished. The synth work is tasteful, the overall instrumental is hella hard, but also dreamy and enticing, and Blade balances the lines vocally between his older and more recent material. Slightly drab, but not dull. Just another good song here. DG Jeans kicks off with some nice ripping synths to set the tone of the track, which then evolves into a much more skeletal beat with a consistent ticking hi-hat and skipping bass. The auto-tune here is especially prominent as Blade sings in one of his most minimalist and traditional melodies on the record so far, but it all feels very smooth over the singular verse, as the lyrics seem to just be about more luxurious fashion and wealth. Not even two minutes long, but it is still a good tune. Feel Like it doesn't really leave the strongest lasting impression, and that might just be because the song is one of the shortest on the record, only a minute and a half, but nothing else is really done to stand out against the other 18 tracks here, the droning, mumbly melody being the only recognizable attribute about the song in my opinion, other than that we get just another helping of bass and hi-hat, don't get me wrong, it's not bad at all, in fact it's still an enjoyable song by itself, 
but by this point in the record, I just started to get a little bit tired of the sound at all. LinkedIn finally brings in the return of Blade's more dead vocal delivery, and while that may sound like a negative, there's just something so addicting and catchy about hearing him slur his words in a tone that sounds like he just woke up five minutes ago. I think it's how easy it is to get swept up in the vibe of the song alongside the synthetic keys, the quaking bass, and swift rattling hi-hat. It's an infectious song and another highlight for me. For Nothing is another track that I've seen a lot of people praise, and I completely get why. This is a banger. For one, I love the new addition of the guitar melody into the beat. It feels so fresh in comparison to the rest of the tape that resorted to the same formula. Of course, that formula still pertains to the song as well, but the guitar spices it up to where this is already a tape standout. Blade's delivery is also more upbeat and lively to correspond with the beat, and he does sound amazing over it. Lyrically, Blade seems to lean into a more nihilistic outlook, believing that nothing we do is of any importance in the grander scheme of things, only doing what he does because he's meant to, it's his fate, even if it doesn't accomplish anything. Love this song, one of my favorites. Anything is a smooth, melodious cut as we near the end of the tape, and I especially love Blade's cloudy singing during the first half of the verse. It's so gripping and ethereal. The beat here is extremely tame, much more a focus on the hi-hat over the bass, but there's also some breakdown that shine light on the synthetic ambience. Aside from the singing, his actual rapping continues in the same droney fashion, but again, it's a very addicting timbre over this simple beat. This is his bread and butter style, and it works so well. And finally, the closer, the Silent Boy Cries parentheses Rip Squad outro doesn't actually have Blade on vocals, but is instead a reworked sample of a song called Design by singer Diana, featuring a glitched out vocal performance, more skittering hi-hat, and a tsunami of suffocating synths before it all gets washed up by the bass, leading to the fade out that ends the tape. A bit of an unexpected closing statement, I don't really think it needed to be here, but it's not terrible. Overall, I can absolutely understand why this is heralded as one of, if not his best projects. It's extremely consistent, very little divergence, it sticks on the straight and narrow and keeps delivering banger after banger with only minor switch-ups that almost seem revolutionary in the context of the record. For me at least, the extreme consistency can also be looked at as a flaw. It's still a 19 track tape, and with how samey a lot of it sounds, I'd have trouble listing more than 5 songs from memory. However, that flaw does pale in comparison to the sheer weight of these songs. Not really a miss here at all, just a lot of it. So it's still a great listen, if you enjoy Blade in really any form, you'll likely enjoy this. I'm feeling an 8 out of 10 on this mixtape. Well guys, hope you enjoyed that review. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.